This is Will Summers again. Uh, this is my second podcast on the Narragansett Surf Shops, Hobie Surf Shops, uh, Odyssey in the, in the Boston area. I thought you all be interested in the surf teams. Surf teams were a huge part of the Massachusetts and New England surf culture in the 1960s. Um, the Hobie team was started in March 1964. After Hobie came here, uh, one of the things he says, you ought to have a surf team. And uh, we sure agreed with that. And um, as we started having the contest, I think the first real big one was in May of 64, 65. Uh, um, we looked at who we could have represent us. And uh, our big competition was the Weber team in Rhode Island, which was from Goldie's Surf Shop. And uh, they imported a guy, which was very common in those days, from California, a guy named Will Needs. And uh, so we needed to compete with him, and we brought three or four guys on the team who were local Rhode Island guys. They really, they were good. Uh, a guy named Frank Cook, uh, he, he was the guy who could do spinners in the peak. Hope you saw him back in February and said, you ought to put that guy on your team. And we found some other guys, a guy named Guy Lister, uh, Chippy Chapel, uh, Paul Tobin, um, and some little bit older guys. Those guys were juniors. Um, but uh, John Caswell, Mike Davis, George Pitts, uh, and then later on, uh, Dennis Leary, Mike Foss. Uh, that was pretty much in Rhode Island, although Mike was from uh, North Shore. But when we started the shop in Hull, uh, obviously we wanted a local team. So um, some of the key players there were Roger Crawford, uh, Jim Flynn and his brother John Flynn, um, and a 10-year-old named Steve Wall, who... Uh, with West Wall is, I, I guess, going to be at the reunion. So that was really a big deal for us. Um, and the second part of it, which was related and also a big deal, was the women. Uh, we couldn't always win the men because we had these imports from California uh, facing us. Uh, but the women were a big deal. So uh, some of the first ones we had was a gal named Beth Wiener in Rhode Island and then uh, a girl named Nancy Buchanan. And But where we really took off was when we went up to New Hampshire and met uh, Cindy Dolan and, and Ann Jones. Uh, they had been surfing a couple of years. Uh, I think Annie's father was an airline pilot, had brought them back a couple of boards from the West Coast, and they were good. They were uh, they knew what to do. So uh, we put them on our team, and uh, they traveled around with us, and uh, we, we, uh, we were good competitors. Now, in Massachusetts, one of the key competitors was Joey Crossan. And Joey served for Dave Williams on the Weber team. And uh, he, he gave our guys a, a good run. He was a good surfer, and we'll look forward to seeing him as, as well at uh, the Reunion Surf 68 in, uh, in June uh, in Hull. Um, a couple other people uh, really w had an interesting role on the surf teams. Um, as we move forward, uh, we had that contest I mentioned in in 1965, as we moved into the spring of 66, we ended up with a whole contest schedule. We had one in March, one in April, uh, both in Matunic, Rhode Island. They were really big, probably had 100 surfers in the water, um, thousands of people on the beach. Uh, we were able to publicize these contests very actively, uh, particularly with WPRO in Providence, with 50,000 watt radio station. WIC in Providence, and finally on WBZ in Boston. So it was really a, a big part of the New England surf culture. They'd plug the contest between every record. Um, the contests were big. And finally then, in I would say June or July of 1966, we had the New England Championships in Rhode Island. And that was uh, kind of seminal because we had some very good surfers over in Newport. And uh, we'd opened the shop there, I think, by then. And uh, Dave Jenkins was one of the guys who worked there. Uh, did a great job. Was a great surfer, uh, teenager. Another young man was probably about 12 or 13 at the time. Was a young man named Billy Bolner, flaming red hair. Uh, he, of course, is Redney, a Redney surf shop. Uh, been around a long time. Done real well. And then finally, there was uh, Betsy Palmer, who was the sportcaster Bud Palmer's daughter. Uh, so we we're now dealing with uh, real society as well as uh, townies in, in Newport. And we were really pleased to have her uh, surf for us. Betsy was a great lady. She was a good surfer, wonderful young woman, and uh, unfortunately uh, passed away in a car accident in Colorado a few years later. Uh, but the one guy who really uh, bridged town and gown in Rhode Island was uh, Chuck Almeida. And Chuck was... Uh, 
young man, Newport area, uh, Portuguese heritage, just a wonderful young man. And uh, we put him on the team, and he was a local, so he wasn't an import. And uh, that was a big contest at the New England Championships at, at Easton's Beach, first beach in, in Newport. Dewey Weber was there, and there were a bunch of guys from the Weber team, and uh, it was really competitive. And Chuck uh, surfed really well. And I, I was the announcer at that contest. I had about 10,000 people there. You, you never know uh, what's going to happen when you get a bullhorn in front of you. And so Chuck won. Judges really absolutely were sure of it. And uh, I had the pleasure of announcing it. And the way it went was, uh, and winning for the senior men's with his five-second nose ride in the tube, Chuck Almeida just screamed it out, and the crowd went wild. So that was a, kind of a big moment for New England surfing. We also had championships in uh, New Hampshire and in Maine, and Roger talks about uh, his win at the, New, at the New Hampshire championship. That was a big deal. Uh, Maine, there were a lot of good surfers up there, uh, still are in places like Algonquit, York Beach, even further up. And uh, we really enjoyed those championships because we were a chance to take the hearse. Uh, I'm going to do a separate talk about that uh, and, and, and travel. Uh, next thing about the surf teams was not only did, did they, uh, the Hobie team um, go to contests, which we did a lot, but we really would just go off on our own and, and uh, do surf odysseys. So we would go up into Maine and go to places that really had never seen surfers and surfboards, and the uh, team would run out and start doing tricks in the water, and everybody would get a big kick out of it. Uh, same thing on the Outer Cape, uh, did a lot out there. Uh, made trips to, um, to Nantucket and to Martha's Vineyard with the team. Traveling in the hearse, kind of a big deal. Uh, next thing I'll tell you a little bit about is the, the team jackets. Now, you have to understand that uh, you, you didn't make much money selling surfboards. Uh, it was kind of for love, and we were giving these things away to the team members anyhow. Um, but you made a lot of money selling clothes. So if you could get clothes that the kids would like, uh, and you guys, and that was a big deal. So uh, we ended up getting jackets from Hang Ten. They were blue with a white stripe, and uh, I think Roger still has his. I talked to Cindy Dolan the other day down in Florida, and first thing she told me, I still have my jacket. So uh, any of you can remember him. Uh, I said Johnny Burns, I think, has his. He certainly has his patches uh, and his baggies. So anyway, that's kind of a big deal as well. Um, Weber team had their jackets. I know you guys probably be proud of those as well. Women, uh, it's a big thing. Anyway, uh, thought you all be interested in New England surf teams. Uh, may have missed some names or forgotten some folks. Uh, my apologies. Thanks.